Functions are instructions packaged together that perform a specific task. To create a function, you use a def keyword, which is short for definition. So if we're to start off, we can create a definition and name it whatever we want. We, we can name it something like taco funk. We can name it taco function or just taco funk for short. But we're going to make this one about magic. So magic funk is going to be our function. And we're going to add these empty parentheses that are just going to sit empty. The empty parentheses is just there because it has to be. That's where we put function parameters. And even if we don't have any function parameters yet, we still need to put that there because our function will complain if we don't because it's looking for our function parameters. So we just give it the empty parentheses to make it happy. And we can even type in this pass. So what the pass is telling the function is that, yes, I know there is nothing in the function, just ignore it and don't give me any error output over. So if we hit play, it's not gonna give us anything. Now we can write something like print magic func. If we print this out, it's not gonna print out what the function is. It's just gonna print out where the function is located in our memory. So this is just a location in our memory block, like in the RAM, and it's just showing us where it is, but it did not execute anything. In order to run this function, we have to put in those empty parentheses to show that we're running this function and not just looking for it. So if we hit play, it's gonna return with none. And it's returning none because this is essentially a Boolean that's showing false. This would be the same as if we had empty brackets, empty braces, empty quotes, empty double quotes. Uh, we had like a video a little bit earlier than this one about Booleans. And in that video, we talked about all the different d types of Booleans and how a lot of the false Booleans are just empty parentheses that equal to none. So if we were to delete the print and just run this as a function, we just wouldn't get anything because it's not printing out anything. It's just running it and we're not telling it to print anything. But let's say now we can actually add something into our function. Let's add a print function inside of our function. So our print is going to say this function is magic. So now if I run this function, I'm going to get this return because we told it to print something out. Functions allow us to run our code without repeating ourselves. There is a term in programming called dry. Dry code is when we don't repeat ourselves throughout our code. It keeps the code dry and clean. Dry actually stands for don't repeat yourself. In order to keep dry, clean, organized, simple code, it's best we use things like function as much as possible to avoid repeating blocks of code that don't need to be repeated when we can just use the function instead. Because imagine if we had code like this. So now this is going to print out this function is magic seven times, including the, defi including the defined function. So if we hit play, we get a lot of things that says this function is magic. But as we can see, our first line says the function is magic, and our other lines say this function is magic. So what if I wanted to change all of these to the function is magic? Well, now I have to go into each one of these print statements and change this to the. And that's not a big issue right now, especially in VS Code, where we can just highlight all the is and change them all to an E to make it the function is magic, but then that would also replace these. You know, it's kind of like a, a bit of work and hassle, especially when this print statement is found throughout a thousand lines of code or maybe even in different files. So it's a lot easier to keep the code dry and just use the function instead of printing it out over and over again. But sometimes printing the function is not what we want. Sometimes we want to return a value with our function and returning a value is different from printing in the sense that return means we execute our function. It's going to be equal to our return value. So these executed functions here are equal to the string. This function is magic. But if we change it to, instead of doing print, we can do return. Return the function is magic. 
and we run magic func. This doesn't bring back anything because it doesn't tell us to print, it just says return. So in this case, we would have to just do print magic func, and this would print out the, the function is magic. A function is essentially a machine that takes input and produces a result. If you've ever played a game like Factorio or Satisfactory, this is the equivalent to a machine where you insert a copper plate and the machine outputs copper wire. And you as a player, you don't need to know how the machine is making the copper wire out of the copper plates. All you need to know is that there are copper plates going in and copper wires coming out. So now let's try one of these input output mechanisms. So you might have seen this one before, print len copper. So print is our first machine and we're inserting len into the print. So len is our first machine or factory. We're inserting copper into the len factory and the len factory is gonna take that copper and return a value out of the copper. And it's just gonna tell us how long the copper word is and it's six letters long. So we don't know what this LEN is doing in the background. We don't know what the code is behind it or how it's turning the copper into numbers. All we know is that we gave it copper and it gave us a number. And to be honest, we don't really need to know why length took copper and gave us a number or how it did it. And we don't really care about it. All we care about right now is that we're giving it a value and it's giving us a value back. So this is a little peace of mind to know that you don't need to know how all of these different statements work. I know when you first get started learning coding, it's so easy to get caught up with, why is it this word? What does, what does this do? Why does it do it like this? So many whys, but it's important to just accept that you don't know, and you aren't going to know until later when you're really good at coding. In the beginning, you don't need to know, because I'll be honest, I don't even know why or how a lot of these functions do the things that they do. I just know that I put in the data and this gives me a different output. So knowing that we can chain functions together. So we can do a function like, we can do the print function and then give it another function which does upper. So this is just gonna print our output in an upper case format. So print is the factory, we're putting in magic func and it's, we have an extra module on our, on our factory, kind of like chained onto it that gives us an extra output. It kind of changes our output a little bit. Now let's do some updating to our function. Let's make use of these blank parentheses. I'm gonna put in school. As a lot of you nerds out there, magic has different types of schools. So a school of magic can be like the restoration school, conjuration, destruction, pyromancy, illusion, alteration, lots of different schools of magic. So we're just going to get nerdy with this. And the return that we're going to use, we're also going to kind of edit this. And we're going to do a, a double brace here and function. So this output is pretty much saying that these braces represent what the school is. So this is where our school is gonna go. That's our first function. And then it's gonna type out function literally. And then this is just showing the, the format. So school is gonna be where these braces are. So if I hit play, then it's not gonna work yet because we need to specify, because we haven't specified a default output. So like we could specify something like conjuration. And then if we hit play, then by default, because we didn't give it an input, a value that we wanted to. Conjuration is the default that it's just going to give us. But if we type something in here, like let's say illusion, and we hit play, then it's going to replace that with illusion because this is what we're telling it to print out here. And we could change this to anything. So we could change this to like fire, and it's going to print out fire. We can change this one, conjuration, to frost, and we can delete fire, and it's going to do frost function. And now we can add extra parameters to this too. So we can add like spell. So our spell can be like frost blast or let's say blizzard. Blizzard sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty icy. So now if I hit play, it's going to not give it out because we haven't specified in the return to return that. We're saying that the function has some values in our parentheses. One is spell equals blizzard, but we haven't told it to return anything to do with that yet. 
So what we can do is add it into here and then the format we got. So here's the placeholders. If I were to run play right now, it's still not going to give back Blizzard because now it's just going to give an error because there's a set of placeholders here that we haven't told the program what we're returning in these placeholders. So we got to make sure we update the format to spell. So the spell is going to go into these placeholders. So if I hit play now, then it's going to say frost blizzard function. And if we were to re switch these up and do spell spell, then it's going to do blizzard blizzard function. And if I were to put school here, then it's going to do blizzard frost function. And if we want to separate these with a dash instead of a comma, then we could just put a dash here. We could put an equal sign here. We can get rid of function altogether if we don't want that written. So now it's just blizzard equals frost. So just play around with those to see the different outputs that you can get by messing around with the orders of all these. And of course, if we don't want the defaults, then we can do some specifications. So we could do illusion and visibility. And then if we hit play, it's going to do invisibility equals illusion because that's how we have it written out in our return. Now let's go on to do a different type of function. This function, we're going to do two key definitions. Our first key definition is going to be schools, and we're going to add in a list of strings. So we could do pyromancy is one school of magic, enchant is another school of magic, and illusion is also another school of magic. And we're going to have different spells in here. For this example, we're going to do a dictionary here, which is just going to be a set of arguments. So our spell is going to be fire blast, and its damage is going to be 30. So we're just going to have one spell in here, and it doesn't like it here. Something doesn't like something. That's because I forgot the semicolon after spell. So our definition of our function is still going to be magic funk. We're going to keep using it. And then we're going to have a star school and double star spells. Or sorry, schools and spells. And we're going to do print schools and print spells. So now we have stars, as you can see. What do the stars mean? Well, one star, one star is unpacking positional arguments, whereas two stars is unpacking keyword arguments. And as we can see, schools is showing us a list of strings, and spells is showing us key value pairs, which are keyword arguments. There are two keywords to take away from this. There's args and there's quarks. Those are kind of weird words, and I didn't like them either at first because they confused me, and they made me feel like I didn't really know what was going on because these are kind of weird looking words. But args is just short for arguments, and quarks is short for keyword arguments. And args arguments are just like these different strings within this list, whereas keyword arguments is saying that here's a key and here's a word, and then here's the key, and then here's the value for it, key and value. So it's like key value pair. Spell, the argument to spell is that it's a fire blast. Here's damage, the argument to damage is that it's 30. So we put one star when it's just a argument, and then we do two stars if it's a keyword argument, such as this spell and fire blast combination, which can also be names, and then we could do like name, is Rupert and his age can be 30. So this would be a different keyword argument. And for skills, he has blacksmithing and long blade. So here's another one where skills is the args. So this would be the same as star args. And then all of his stats would be the quarks. So the list of skills that Rupert has are the star args and the stats that Rupert has are the quarks. So you know, this, this would be things like level, this would be things like his birth sign, his height, his specialization, whereas the skills would be stuff like long blade, um, heavy armor, you know, just a bunch of examples. I'm gonna delete this, but. So that's kind of a way that you can compartmentalize arguments and quarguments if you're a gamer. So now if I hit play on these, it's not gonna output anything because we might have to actually do magic, funk, schools, and spells. So now if we hit play, now it will run and unpack all of them. So now it's unpacked our 
args and it's unpacked our quarks. So this was a pretty crazy video, a lot to take away from this. So I hope it made sense. <laughs> Thanks for watching.